Until We Die is a 2D side-scrolling base defense strategy game. You control a commander who grunts at the soldiers under him to direct them to their tasks, with the main goal being to protect your generator at all costs. A simple premise that isn't so easy. The mutants are dangerous and you're working to overcome the odds which are not in your favor. You definitely have options though, so it's not all lost. Until We Die is quite a challenge and I'm still trying to find the correct build order, but it's that challenge that is so much frustrating fun. Anyway, all this is happening because a meteorite fell to Earth. From that meteorite, terrible mutants were spawned. Humans were forced to flee into the subway and stand their ground. So you set up your base in the metro and fortify it from the endless nighttime assault from the mutants. If this sounds familiar, that's because it's similar to the plot from the Metro series. You know, Metro 2033 or Metro Last Light. Both take place in the Russian metro system against the abominations that are a little spooky. If the developers didn't take inspiration from the series, then there is a Russian bedtime story I'm missing out on. I initially thought they were related, but they're not. I've checked twice. So how can you possibly harden a subway tunnel against the onslaught? Well, walls are your new best friend. Your generator is at the center of your base and provides power to your buildings. You build walls on each side of your base and order some men to guard them. During the day, you can command them to scrounge for resources past the walls like food and scrap. Scrap is used to pay for all your construction needs. Food is traded for scrap and another soldier if you have the room. There is a limit to how many people your camp can hold but it is expandable. The flow of the game is to build and collect as many resources as you can during the day, then survive the attacks at night. If one of your walls falls, your soldiers will retreat back to the next one. If no walls are remaining, then they're useless or more likely already dead. If you survive, you'll build back your walls if necessary and start the cycle all over again. You will need to run back and forth constantly between the ends of your outpost to order everyone around. They don't do anything unless you tell them to. And your commander runs painfully slow with little stamina. Is it enough to run from one side to the other? Depends on how far you're pushed out and if you have any fire barrels on the way to restore your stamina. He's killing me though. Once you have three walls on each side, it takes forever to run between them. Gaining stamina back at a fire isn't that fast either. It makes it very difficult to choose where you'll want to defend. If you choose wrong, running to the opposite side isn't really an option. It's also difficult to tell what's happening at the other wall. You can see at the top of the screen how many walls and their damage levels, but no idea how many enemies are there or if they need help. It would be nice to know if they were repairing the wall before you ran all the way over there. While the mutant attacks start small enough, they grow with each night getting worse and worse. The amount of enemies that attack is not the same on each side either, each side of the base. So having unarmed people isn't going to be enough to defend, even though you have your own rifle to help out. You'll need to set up a workshop where they'll build shovels. Yes, shovels. Handing a simple person a shovel turns them into a stronger, more effective melee fighter. They offer other utility like clearing out debris so you can further expand your base. After you have that set up, you'll want to start building more. For example, the engineering tent, since engineers can work on furthering your tech. They're good at building and will be required to construct more advanced structures. You'll need at least one engineer to research upgrades from the lab. 
You cannot choose the upgrades though, and they're the same each run and in the same order. However, there are upgrades you can choose between right away at the start and then a few times later on when you meet certain criteria. For example, upgrading a building or constructing enough walls. They're useful and might deliver a few more soldiers to you or fortify your walls more. Either I haven't found the right ones or they're not that powerful. I've tried a few now and I don't feel like they make a huge improvement. It helps, but if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, the upgrades will not save you. Keep in mind Until We Die has even more buildings, which I don't want to spoil here. Also, there are a couple other soldier classes and they all do something different. It's the order of buildings and balance of soldier types that is important in the game. There's going to be a proper way to play, especially since the scrap used to pay for all the upgrades is sorta of limited. There's a limited amount you can collect on the map and you can only trade food when the timer is up. I believe you could figure out the game and calculate the optimal path through it. If all these mechanics sound familiar, that's because it's similar to Kingdom, another game I expect the developers took some inspiration from. However, it's different enough that players of Kingdom will probably enjoy Until We Die as well. The combination of Kingdom plus Metro makes Until We Die unique. Moving on to permanent upgrades. They're given when you survive for a specific amount of days. For example, the first one, it's around eight days and will fortify your walls. The unexpected part is instead of giving you a boost right at the start, it's added as a level mechanic. You will need to station an engineer there to operate the upgrade and it's not in your territory at the start. It's interesting, but who does it help? If you can reach the required days, then maybe you could have pushed further without the help. Unless you can't survive without it. But does the game expect us to replay a few times to unlock everything to finish the game? I, I don't know. Anyway, there are three different difficulty modes, each adding on something a little different to make the game even more challenging. You can see the list I've put on the screen right now. I've seen some mention in the Steam community forums that there will be more heroes and scenarios added and they might exist right now, but you can't get to them until you finish the first scenario. This leads to the next topic. I haven't finished the first scenario or I even can't get that far into Until We Die. I did unlock the first permanent upgrade, but I cannot make it to 16 days for the next. I'm struggling to find the balance of power for defending my walls. If I choose the wrong side, the others completely run over, especially if any of the enemies explode. Melee fighters against instantly exploding enemies isn't great. Who would have guessed? So when I lose, it doesn't feel obvious what I did wrong. I'm frustrated at repeating the opening six days over and over and over again and for now, I have lost interest in playing. I don't want to dissuade anyone from getting Until We Die though. It's, it's a well-made game that for some reason I can't figure out, though I enjoyed Kingdom very much. Overall, Until We Die is fun and I'm a big fan of the theme. As I just explained, I like the game, but right now I'm failing to solve it. There's a lot of trial and error and sitting through the opening days is draining. If this is the type of game you jam on, I would expect that you'll enjoy it. So can you help me find an indie FPS to play? I'm taking recommendations for something to play in my free time, not review. Thanks for the recommendation and thanks for watching.